Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Maradi, and here at the Surface Navy Association's 2020 National Symposium, the number one gathering of Surface Navy leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by GE Marine and Leonardo DRS, and we're here at the Leonardo DRS stand to talk to Mike Coulter, uh, who's the Senior Vice President for Business Development at Leonardo DRS, uh, uh, Navy Reservist uh, still, proud Navy Reservist, um, with, uh, and you're not wearing your Expeditionary Warfare badge, so uh, just to let everybody know that he's not your uh, classical uh, SWO, even though this is a surface warfare show. Um, Mike, extraordinary time for the U.S. Navy, right? I mean, just across every dimension, there are more programs underway now. We've got the new integrated force structure assessment that's going to come out that's going to put a premium on uh, surface warships. Uh, every indication we get that when that comes out, it'll be around 357 manned ships, and the rest of them will be made by unmanned. There's a lot of talk about directed energy certainly on electric propulsion. All of these things are things that are in your wheelhouse that you guys have been investing on. When you hear some of these messages from Navy leadership, how are you guys matching and reaching across the portfolio to be able to put together the kind of solutions the service wants? Because as we heard from uh, Acquisition Chief Hondo Gertz, everybody wants everything fast. Yeah, I guess I'd start with, so as you know, we turned 50 this year. We started as a Navy company, so we have a half a century of doing Navy business. Um, the past three years have been phenomenal in that we've had above market double digit growth in those, primarily in the Navy side. Uh, so our relationship with the Navy is much deeper than it has been for a long time. So we're in the cycle of talking with them about requirements. So we think that our experience and expertise primarily on the power side and on the electronic side um, really situate us well to address the Navy's issues that they're dealing with today. And uh, walk us through the portfolio, right? You guys were have been uh, investing in uh, electric drive technology. We've talked about that in the past. You guys have been working a little bit on directed energy. Walk, walk, walk us across the portfolio of some of the specific things you have that you think are going to make um, the Navy's uh, problems easier because the Navy now is looking at individually competing this as opposed to going to an integrated system that just one contractor uh, delivers as part of their proposal. Yeah, so when people think about DRS, we really think about power, right? So the power that started as naval power. So we're doing the system for Columbia, delivered recently, taking that same technology and transitioning it to other opportunities. We've transitioned it to the Army uh, for combat vehicles and exporting power. We've, we're exporting it, we're transitioning it to the surface community as well. So uh, currently the Korean Navy is using our hybrid electric drive fleet. The U.S. Coast Guard is using our hybrid electric drive. Uh, we are partnered with Fincantieri on hybrid electric drive for FFGX. Um, as the Navy talks about all of the sensors, all of the lasers that are going on to Navy ships, you need more power. So the Navy uh, CNO says we have a power problem, and we believe that we have the answer to that problem. On the laser side, so we also, in addition, we've taken the technology and moved it to the uh, what we call the Energy Magazine laser. So we provide for the Navy the program of record that provides the power for that laser. And um Talk about sustainment, right? I mean, one of the big issues, and, and I know this is something important to you guys, is the sheer backlog that Admiral Moore and everybody at NAVC and across industry are trying to work in terms of improve readiness rates for ships, get ships out of shipyards faster. How are you guys working on that whole sustainment piece? Because you do touch virtually everything on the inside of the ships to allow them to be able to get back out to sea. Yeah, so that's really a multifaceted approach that you have to deal with. So I think that one of the first things that we've done to help them address that is drive down costs, right? So as the Navy has, as we've worked with the Navy to reshape requirements to really build to print opportunities, we've been the leader with the Navy on build to print. So as we can drive costs down, allowing, allowing them to invest more in ship readiness, I think that that's been a really key piece of it. Um, uh, other on, uh, so we have a very deep heavy manufacturing capability uh, so we've partnered with the shipyards. We've spent time with all the shipyards, visiting their sites, identifying opportunities. It, it is hard. I mean, we, we are, as an industry, we are rebuilding a defense, uh, a Navy shipyard workforce that really atrophied over decades. Um, but now that we've done that, we feel like if we partner with the shipyards to get them the capabilities they need for the replenishments and at the same time are driving down costs, we're helping the Navy. Um, one of the questions uh, is, uh, whether the rhetoric matches the reality in terms of speed. Every administration has been talking about reforms that will accelerate the acquisition process. Uh, this administration has been talking a lot about it, and yet there's a little bit of, of concern whether or not those needles are actually moving. You interface at all levels with, with uh, the customer. Do you, are you noticing things moving dramatically more quickly now than they were, say, whether it's six months or a year ago? Yeah, so we are. Um, on the big procurements, it is a little slower. Um, 
as it should be, right? These are very deliberate, long-time program of records. The Navy's done a really interesting job on experimenting with programs, right? So they, as they set up the OTAs, we have a deep relationship with the Instic OTA, for instance, where we're helping with them toy with opportunities. I think the most interesting one uh, as an industry is where we're going on unmanned. Um, as, in, as the Navy has decided to buy a few unmanned, they've set up the surface development squadron out in San Diego, are taking a few programs, iterating on them. Where the Navy decides to go, the 355 plus unmanned, 355 plus plus unmanned, um, will really be a strategic game changer. I, as you look at the technology that is going to be required for unmanned, I believe that that will actually be the future of the manned fleet. As you invest in what a engine room looks like on an unmanned surface vehicle, you can't have a sailor down there ch checking the oil, doing those sorts of things. So the investments that you make on unmanned will ultimately come back to be the future of the manned surface fleet. And, and do you guys feel uh, comfortable where you are in terms of your unmanned uh, capability? I know you guys have been investing in that, but that's something that's very important to um, a lot of uh, folks, and everybody's been investing in that. Do you guys feel like you have to bolster that capability, go out of house, partner? We're, we're, what's your sense on how you guys are going to be tackling that piece of it, given that we're, in a couple of years, going to be looking at 250 plus foot ships that will be unmanned or optionally manned? So as far as sensors and the types of things that you'd put on it, I think on the medium and small, uh, we are very well situated, everything from electronic warfare to electronics. I, where the Navy goes on power will be very interesting. So the large unmanned vehicle, as I mentioned, you really need to design a new engine room. Uh, if you buy one or two, I'm not sure you can get there on, on the investment required to, to have the engine room of the future. Um, as we start to get clarity on the Navy's vision for what large unmanned surface vehicles are going to be, what their con ops, are they unmanned, are they optionally manned, are they optionally unmanned, um, that will provide a lot more clarity. But we certainly believe that the advantages of hybrid electric drive as far as time on station, um, ready maintenance, uh, those sorts of things make hybrid electric drive the, the obvious solution for large unmanned surface vehicles. Mike Coulter, uh, the Senior Vice President for Business Development at Leonardo DRS. Uh, Mike, thanks very much. It's always a pleasure and, uh, and uh, break a leg on uh, another uh, uh, record year. Thanks, Fago. Appreciate it. Happy New Year.